guys, welcome back to Urban Rhino Tutorials. On this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use a rhinestone connector to make a vintage inspired multi-strand bracelet. It's kind of a mouthful there. Um, so I have these, um, two of these little rhinestone, um, these are called so many different things. It can be called a chandelier component, a connector bar. <laughs> there are so many names for these depending on what company you buy them for. But essentially what it is, is going to be like a bar. It's gonna have a single loop on top and it will have a certain number of loops at the bottom. And you can get these without rhinestones as well. Um, for this particular one, this is what I wanted to use. So. You'll see there are four loops, which means I will have four different strands coming out of this. And then on this side, I will use a toggle clasp like this to connect it together. Um, so whereas normally the clasp is kind of not what you wanna focus on, um, on this particular one, that will serve kind of more as the front part or the top part of the bracelet. So I'm gonna be making three strands that are beaded and I'm going to include um, the fourth strand will just be a single strand of chain like this. So this is just some very, very large curb chain. I shouldn't say very large, but the, the links are large. Um, so what I have begun doing is I cut three strands of fishing line. Remember, you can use beading wire, but we use fishing line in my class just because it's cheaper. And these are about eight inches long. And depending on the size of your wrist, you may need to go a little smaller, a little longer. You can always cut off the excess. Um, I already put two on and then I'm going to leave the third loop empty because I will connect my chain there. Move this out of the way. And then on the fourth one, I'm going to show you how I connected these. I just went ahead and connected those to save some time. So to begin, this if I can pick it up here, you're gonna take a crimp bead and slide it on your fishing line. Before you do anything else, slide that on. Kind of make sure you're holding it. Put it through the loop on a little connector bar. And then with about an inch or so sticking out, you want to tuck it back into the crimp bead. So it makes a loop. And then what you want to do is just slide the crimp bead as close to the loop as you can get it and crimp it in place. So you have your strand connected. Um, I will tell you what I usually tell my students is to not, on, on projects like this, to not trim off the what we call tail of fishing line. So the little part that's sticking out, you can trim it down some, but if you keep a little bit, then when you put your beads on, you can just go over both pieces. If you cut it really short, really short, you risk one, it coming out of the crimp bead, and two, you just don't wanna see it, it looks sloppy. So I will begin with my first row of beads and actually, I think I'm gonna do, let me see, chain here. I'll do a bigger one, a bigger one, and we'll do these smaller beads here. So I'm just gonna start putting them on. And like I said, and these other pieces kinda get in your way, you can wait and crimp your fishing line on each strand as you go if you want. I think it's easier to put them all on at once. Um, so I'm going over both pieces. So remember, you've got the little tail sticking out, so I'm trying to cover that up. And I'm just putting my beads on, pretty simple. Um, and I'm gonna do this for my three strands. And I'm not gonna sit here and do all of this um, on screen. I just wanna give you an idea of how this will go. That one, there we go. Um, so again, I would tuck them in to both pieces so that they're covered like that. And I would continue it on until I get it to the length that I want. What you have to keep in mind is that on your strand that's coming around, you're gonna have another bar, plus you are going to have, let's see if I can hold this, how coordinated I am. 
plus you're gonna have this toggle clasp that is also going to take up space like that. So you're gonna have your other bar, the toggle clasp in this. So when you're thinking about the length of what your strand needs to be, you're gonna wanna stop it about here. So you can make it as loose as you want, that's your preference, um, but you wanna stop it about here so that you're not going too far and then when you connect your other bar and your toggle clasp, you end up with this really, really um, loose bracelet that you don't want. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and finish beading this. So I'm gonna put the beads on here to the length that I want. I'm gonna do the same to this strand and this strand. I'm gonna use some different beads and do a different pattern. Um, and when I return, I'll have those strands finished. I'm gonna show you how you finish them up. So how you crimp them to the other connector bar and then how to finish with the chain and the clasp. As you can see, I have all three strands beaded. I went ahead and connected um, two of them to my other bar, just to jump ahead here, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did that with this particular strand here. So again, you will grab a crimp bead, and just like you did at the beginning, you're gonna put it on your fishing line, then you're gonna go through your loop, you wanna make sure that unless you are intentionally intentionally trying to twist them, you wanna make sure that you're lining them up. So let me get this through and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going back through my crimp bead and then I'm gonna pull it like this all the way and then crimp it. Um, so what I meant is, there we go. Um, if you, are on the first loop here. You wanna make sure that when you connect it over here, you're on the first loop again. The same with the second one, third and fourth, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, so from here, what we're gonna do is connect our chain wherever I put it. Um, and I'm gonna connect this just with a jump ring on each side. So I want to cut it to the right length and then I'm gonna take a matching small jump ring. I wanna do as small as I can so it's not um, like an eyesore. <laughs> you know, it doesn't take up a lot of the, the bracelet. So open the jump ring, twist it open, hook it on your loop. Actually, let's hook it on the chain first and then hook it on the loop, that'd be easier. Hook it on here and then onto the loop that you chose to put it on, close it up and you could use any kind of chain that you wanted on this. I'm obsessed with paperclip chain right now, um, which is really cute. It's the long like ovals. Um, so you could use that, you could use curb chain. This is a larger curb chain could use cable chain, doesn't matter. Um, and then I'm gonna hook the other side on. And this is something, um, like with a lot of the projects that I do, you could definitely change up the colors and make it suit whatever holiday you wanted to wear it for, um, whatever event you're going to. If you just like specific colors, you could certainly change it around however you want. So again, I'm hooking it on the loop, closing it up like that. So we have both sides connected. So all four strands are on now. So all that's left to do is just connect on our toggle clasp. So I'm gonna grab a couple smaller, not, not totally small, but smaller jump rings. And I'm going to open those up. Hook it on, and then maybe, there we go. Hook on one side of your toggle clasp, so either the ring or the bar, doesn't matter. And then close it, and we're gonna do the exact same for the other side. So open the jump ring. on the bar, on the connector bar, 
and then close it up. There we have it. So you can see if I wanted to put this on, I'm gonna carefully do this here. Um, the bar of the toggle clasp, as I'm sure you know, goes through the, um, let me just spin it around like this. You don't look at my gross veins popping out of my, <laughs> my wrist. So you can see now um, what normally is the back of the bracelet. So what I mean is, you know, most people generally don't want to see the clasp part of their bracelet, but um, with a toggle clasp that's kind of decorative as well as these rhinestones, that kind of becomes more of the focal point versus just the beaded strands. So as it spins around on your wrist, you don't have to be concerned, you know, that the clasp is showing because on this particular bracelet, the clasp is really cute. So, um, so again, I'm going to be doing several videos upcoming with multi-strand bracelets. So we're going to kind of um, walk through, you know, similar steps, but changing up small things. So maybe we'll use connectors throughout the bracelet. Um, I'll show you how to attach charms. We will include um, some kids ones in there as well. So just stay tuned for those should be coming up soon. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching guys. Mm -hmm.